Government's Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. Please give a warm round of applause to California City Mayor and Kern Cog Chairwoman Jennifer Wood. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending the Kern Council of Government's 25th Annual Regional Awards of Merit Ceremony. My name is Jennifer Wood, and I am Kern Cog's Chairwoman for 2016. Tonight, we honor individuals and organizations that have demonstrated leadership and dedication and who have shown a commitment to make their own communities and the entire region of Kern a better place to live and work. Now, more than ever, Kern Cog's mission is critical. It's crucial for the region's growth and development. Many of today's challenges do not end at convenient geographic boundaries. Air pollution, unemployment, a growing population and soaring utility prices. These are all concerns that are not unique to Bakersfield or Cal and, and California City. Our, and our award recipients, excuse me, this evening demonstrate that improving one community can lead to healthier communities overall. They do this with programs that have the power to transform lives, like the Village Retreat in Ridgecrest or the Ford Theater in Shafter. Leaders such as Lorelei Oviat, Bob Neath, Jim Suver show us each day the amazing potential that good deeds, creativity, and dedication do to inspire our fellow residents and friends to carry the message forward and raise our region's quality of life for everyone. Fortunately, Kern Cog is not the only organization to recognize important work performed by our award recipients. Tonight's honorees will also be receiving certificates of recognition from the Kern County Board of Supervisors, Assembly members Rudy Salas and Shannon Grove, and also from Senators Gene Fulder and Andy Vidak, and from Congressman Kevin McCarthy and David Valadeo. Some of these good people are in the audience themselves or have representatives here to offer their warmest regards. Please hold your applause until every person is recognized. Starting with retired Congressman Bill Thomas, Vincent Fong with Congressman Kevin McCarthy's office and now an Assembly candidate Fong, Benjamin Stark and Senator James Fuller's office, Supervisors Zach Scrivener, David Couch, Leticia Perez, and mayors and city councils from the cities of Bakersfield, California City, Delano, Ridgecrest, Shafter, and Taft. Welcome to you all and thank you for coming. The people that really make this program successful are the ones that are out there behind the lights. You met Lori Collins and Tammy Jones as you checked in at the door. Uh, they took your reservations, that when they called and they emailed and coordinated things behind the scenes. Our intern, Lindsay Long, made sure I had this script to read tonight and helped organize the presentations you will see tonight. Without these members of our staff, this program would not happen. Let's give them a round of applause. I would also like to acknowledge the hard work of the employees of Kern Government Te Television, also known as KGov, who have helped us develop this year's presentation highlighting the programs and individuals and being honored for their uh, outstanding achievements. Please give them a round of applause as well. Great guys. The regional awards are again being recorded and will be replayed next month on KGov. This way, we have a chance to share the work of our honorees with all of Kern County. What makes this, really, this event really special is that our recipients can celebrate with friends and neighbors. So thank you all for coming, provide your support to the honorees, and to celebrate the wonderful gifts they have bestowed upon us. Now, on with the show. Most of us in Kern County enjoy the small town life, but unfortunately rural farming communities like Arvin still find themselves recovering from the 2008 recession. The U.S. Census Bureau suggests that the root cause behind this abnormally high unemployment rate and economic stagnation is the lack of a trained workforce. Simply put, Southern Kern's residents need better education to continue working in their own communities. To attack this alarming problem, Kern County, Bakersfield College, and Arvin High School partnered with the Kern County Taxpayers Association to launch the revolutionary 1 plus 1 plus 2 Game Changer program. Collaboration among Kern County Supervisor Leticia Perez, Bakersfield College President Dr. Sonia Christian, and Dr. Brian Schaefer from the Kern High School District has produced economically efficient pathways for students to succeed. 
The program is capable of shepherding motivated Arvin students through high school and higher education before ultimately injecting them directly into the Kern County job market as highly skilled, degree-caring adults who are ready to address the area's overwhelming need for qualified employees in multiple industries. The program is also introducing a host of dual enrollment, college-level career technical courses on the Arvin High School campus, which is an unprecedented first for this region. At the end of this school year, 1,000 students will have earned Bakersfield College credit while also earning their high school education, and future students in this paradigm-shifting program will ultimately earn a full year of college credit before graduating high school. The success in Arvin is only the beginning. Bakersfield College is considering expanding the program to other current communities. We look forward to the life-changing opportunities that the 1 plus 1 plus 2 Game Changer program will bring to our youth. We congratulate the 1 plus 1 plus 2 Game Changer program as the recipient of our 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Local Government. Accepting this award is Supervisor Leticia Perez and Dr. Brian Schaefer, Superintendent Kern High School District. I'm here to introduce Leticia. Um, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sorry. My name is Brian Schaefer, and I am the superintendent of the Kern High School District. And, and I, I really appreciate the, the recognition that, that we re we're receiving tonight um, because I firmly believe that the only way our students will be successful is if we all work together. And I truly appreciate all of you as, as businessmen and concerned citizens of, of Kern County and I really look forward to the wonderful things that we have in store in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Well, while I'd love to take all the credit this evening, uh, I can't. I see that Dr. Sonia Christian has joined us, so I don't think that we knew that a moment ago. But uh, the real mastermind and genius behind this project and its launching really is Dr. Sonia Christian, of course, Mike Turnipseed, who uh, bosses me around on a regular basis. Uh, but certainly, uh, I think it would be appropriate. And if you could come forward, Doctor, it would be so great. No. Well, this has been an amazing partnership. BC Gang, where are you guys? All right, so that's the group that really worked closely with Brian's team and Mike Turnipseed made sure it all came together and Leticia Perez totally rocks. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you could, excuse me, if you could have this together, it's more so Taft's Midway Cemetery dates back more than a century and is the final resting place for many pioneers on the west side. The site was used only sparingly until the 1950s when it was abandoned for more than 50 years. Marked by crumbling cement pillars and what was once a cable fence, the all but forgotten cemetery was in desperate need of a renovation. Despite stormwater that ravaged the entire area, local residents Guy Lingo and Larry Lyon continued to gather history on the cemetery and the people buried there. Most of the several hundred graves were unmarked or had a simple unknown written across the site. All that has changed. The Westside Cemetery District started working on plans to refurbish the cemetery in 2014 with the hope of rededicating the site during the 2015 Oil Dorado celebration. Cemetery Director and Administrator Joe Bauer is the first of many directors who believe the area deserved to be treated with reverence, and the Board of Directors agreed. They funded the project with help from local citizens and businesses. New granite gravestones were placed on every grave. Jerry Melton Construction donated its time and efforts into installing a new wrought iron fence that now surrounds the entire area. And Eagle Scout Tanner Melton, with the help of several volunteer parties under him, moved several hundred tons of gravel by hand since it was not certain that the ground could handle the weight of heavy equipment. Our past is a very important part of who we are. To recognize the need to preserve the area is not only our responsibility, but our duty. 
The Westside Cemetery District Board of Directors, along with Administrator Joe Bauer and Tanner Milton, should all be proud of their efforts. Taft is thankful to have its history well preserved. And the 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Local Government is presented to the Westside Cemetery District. Accepting this award tonight is District Manager Joel Bauer. Just like to take a minute to thank everybody for this award on behalf of the district. Um, this was a dream that the board of directors and myself put together, like the video said, a little over a year ago. And uh, through the efforts of not only the district, but through all of the, the help that we got from the community, from the Oil Dorado Committee, the Chamber of Commerce, and, and several of the service clubs, we were able to realize this dream. Tonight I have this young man with me, uh, Tanner Milton, who was a huge part of getting that done. and. Uh, I'd just like to publicly thank him and his family, Steve and Robin, and his grandfather, Jerry Milton, for all the effort and things they put in. Thank you. At a time when our residents are drowning in news about just how bad the drought is, the Kern County Water Agency's Improvement District No. 4 is leading conservation efforts by ensuring that the public is well informed. The district's comprehensive water education program explains Kern County's local and imported water supply in a way that thousands of students can better understand this precious resource. The program incorporates teacher workshops, curriculum materials, assemblies, classroom presentations, and student contests while still supporting Common Core and Next Generation Science Standards for kindergarten through 12th grade classes. In 2014, the program was expanded to include a next-generation science standards-based high school program. Core components include presentations on groundwater, local and state water supplies, and water purification. The district has since partnered with the Kern County Superintendent of Schools Communications Department and the Jim Burke Education Foundation Dream Builders to produce the 45-minute Do the Water video. The program launched on September 16th and appeared on the superintendent's Do the Math television show. Remaining segments were then aired each week before culminating in its own show that has now been broadcast on multiple networks. This project will produce lasting benefits and ensure that all of us savor every sip we take. Congratulations to the Kern County Water Agency's Improvement District No. 4 as recipients of the 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Local Government. Accepting the award is Manager David Beard. Good evening. <clears throat> Part of our program allows teachers to come into the agency and we provide a workshop for them. And one of the things that I always tell them when I give them a brief pep talk is that my first career out of college, I was a teacher, and that is by far the hardest job I've ever had. <laughs> so if you're a teacher, pat yourself on the back. If you know a teacher, be sure to pat them on the back. In any case, uh, I do want to thank tonight the uh, Kern County Agency Board of Directors for continuing to support the water education program that we offer. Also, the uh, local water purveyors that support Improvement District Number 4, which include Cal Water Service Company, City of Bakersfield, East Niles Community Services District, north of the River Municipal Water District, Oil Deal Mutual Water Company, and Vaughn Water Company. So there's a good chance that some of you pay water bills to those companies, but <laughs> it is going to a good cause. Um, also, Kern County Superintendent of Schools and uh, the Jim Burke Ford, uh, Jim Burke Ford uh, Education Foundation, they were great partners in developing these videos. And then lastly, I want to thank Jeannie Varga and Sarah Clayton, uh, two consultants to the agency, because without their efforts, the water education in these videos would never have taken off, and their, their tireless work has really paid off. So, thanks again. Okay. 
In 1946, the Taft Chamber of Commerce formed an organization to plan and oversee one of Taft's largest celebrations. Oil Dorado Days has grown into a 10-day celebration that occurs every five years to recognize the petroleum industry that serves as the community's roots. We can't imagine a better way to celebrate the hard-working men and women who operate one of the largest oil fields in the state. In 2015, President Paul Linder and his executive board did an outstanding job making sure every part of the Oil Dorado tradition was represented. From oil-filled skills, the Maids of Petroleum, Whiskerino, and Tessie Bun contests, to the traditional events of the Grand Parade, Hot Air Balloon Festival, Vintage Warcraft Air Show, and car shows. Throughout the city, restaurants, stores, and vendors welcomed visitors of all ages. Museums kept the elaborate celebration going well into the evening hours. Also included this year was the West Kern Petroleum Summit presented by the Taft College Foundation and the first ever Oil Stone Concert Series. Talk about a good time. This unique combination of exciting events gave everyone a reason to visit Taft during Oil Dorado 2015. This event is a true merit of community involvement. It is planned and executed solely by volunteers who can't be thanked enough for their contribution to Taft and Kern County. We look forward to celebrating again in 2020. We are proud to present our 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Community Involvement to the 2015 Oil Dorado Executive Board. Accepting this award is Board President and our friend Paul Linder. Not all of us are here. They couldn't fit 250 plus volunteers in the room. Um, thank you very much, Kern Cog. It's a pleasure to be back amongst you again. Um, I, I just um, want to tell you to put on a 10-day celebration takes a tremendous amount of effort. And um, these ladies and gentlemen that are with me tonight are have been on Oil Dorado executive boards for years. Randy Miller is Mayor Taft, but he's a past Oil Dorado president. Glenn Black is a past Oil Dorado president. Dennis Eubanks has been involved. Our lovely queen that was crowned this year for Oil Dorado. Uh, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Madison Rubido and Shannon Jones, who's our treasurer. But um, it goes much farther than that because uh, for everybody that you see up here, there's probably 15 or 20 more people that are doing the work out there and getting this thing going. And if you think it's easy, it's not. That's why we only do it every five years. <laughs> but um, the, you know, one of, the, one of the challenges, and I like to tell the story, is that um, can you imagine what it's like to go to an insurance company and tell them that you would like to, an insurance policy on a 10-day celebration where we have uh, men and women driving around in the back of trucks, shooting off guns, <laughs> drinking beer. And I think we were very fortunate because one of our local insurance agencies managed to find somebody after four or five attempts. But, um, <laughs> But truthfully, I'd, I'd, I'd really like to, to thank this group of people because they, they worked tirelessly for four years to put on the two, 2015 celebration. Um, I, I can't thank our sponsors enough, the oil companies that stepped up and helped us provide this uh, entertainment venue because we did, we did so many things. We did uh, things every day. We had a store which um, within 10 days produced an ungodly amount of sales tax. Uh, we couldn't, we could not keep stock in the store. It just sold out and sold out and sold out and we're still getting requests for merchandise. But anyway, it's a great celebration and, uh, and trust me, if you're, if you're going to attempt something like this, get lots of good people behind you because uh, that's what I did and it worked out really well. So thank you so much to everybody. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention because there's a couple of police chiefs in the uh, audience and you guys have been great, but um, Chief Whiting, uh, part of, part of our, our, our event is to make sure everybody is safe and comfortable and Chief Whiting and his department certainly um, played a big part in that but he tapped into the agencies uh, throughout Kern County which included Bakersfield uh, Police Department, Kern County Sheriff, I think Ridgecrest was there, Delano was there, all these agencies sent people down to patrol and make sure people were safe during our event and that we can't thank you enough for so thank you for the award we appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs>
In 2010, Building Healthy Community South Kern began a 10-year initiative to achieve a better health in Arvin, Lamont, Weed Patch, and Greenfield. Over the last five years, those communities have seen significant improvement in education, the environment, recreation, and access to health care. Part of the success can be attributed to how well priorities have been set. The agencies and organizations participating made sure that leadership was evenly distributed between residents and agency representatives. The community's voice was heard, validated, and respected, which in turn paved the way for tremendous progress and fantastic results. Accountability to South Kern is key, and Building Healthy Communities proves this every month through newsletters, community meetings, and snapshots highlighting the work of each of the four focus areas. Just a few examples of their success include the Kern Environmental Enforcement Network, more than 70 new water stations that provide clean drinking waters in areas with contaminated wells, outreach and enrollments for the Affordable Care Act, Bike Bakersfield opening its first satellite location in Arvin, providing an expansion and consistent schedule of Bakersfield classes now being offered in Arvin, and improved school meals offering nutritional value at all K-8 school sites. This type of collaboration among communities and agencies has not been seen before in South Kern. Building Healthy Communities South Kern is proving it has the skill to build healthy communities for the next generation by creating partnerships, leveraging resources, and changing the narrative. We're thrilled to see what the next five years will bring. We are proud to present our 2015 Regional Award of Merit for community involvement to the Building Healthy Communities South Kern. Accepting the award will be Project Director Jennifer M. Wood Slayton. Uh, so, um, Building Healthy Communities South Kern, our goal, our tagline, our purpose is to build healthy communities for the next generation. So I wanted to bring some of our next generation who were able to make it. Um, one of the things that we really strongly believe with building healthy communities is that we have to have everybody at the table. That means we have to have partners and organizations equally at the table with our residents and with our youth. So we have our youth who okay, were able to come here, up here to support us. And we also have our steering committee members who are partners and residents as well at our table. So I'd just like for people to give them a brief round of applause. I mean, a really extended round of applause. <laughs> because they work really hard to make sure that the initiative is running the way it's supposed to. But the thing about this initiative is that I get to stand up here because nobody else was willing to speak, but the people who are actually doing the work are the 100 plus partners who are willing to come out and make an investment in South Kern because they believe that our families and our children and our youth and the future that they have to have to be healthy and the changes that have to happen in our communities to make that happen are worth their time and their effort. So just thank you to many of you who are in this room. And if you aren't yet part of Building Healthy Community South Kern, you're more than welcome. Thanks. The fundamental goal for any community is to achieve the highest quality of life for all its citizens. What makes the Ford Theater story special is that one family in Shafter took it upon itself to bring art and entertainment to residents. When the Holiday Ford Auto Dealership closed in 2010, a vacant and lifeless building remained. Numerous potential buyers showed interest, but it took the vision of the local Star family to see the building's full potential. The Starr family has a long tradition of community involvement in Shafter and knows that quality of life also includes a commitment to the arts. Art can reflect community values, start dialogues, bring people together, and create a sense of belonging and pride. The Shafter Ford Theater now encompasses all of this and much more. The showroom area in the front houses a Covenant coffee store complete with a drive through offices, and an open area for art displays and gatherings. A stunning curved wood lobby leads to the most ambitious aspect of the project a 250-seat theater that can also be reconfigured to provide banquet seating for nearly 300 people. This one-of-a-kind theater has already hosted numerous events and theatrical productions, including Always Patsy Klein, starring American Idol finalist and Las Vegas headliner Amy Adams. The Star family has created a fantastic venue and community asset. Their investment, along with the determined work of local contractors and other key community members, will serve Shafter for generations to come. The 2015 Award of Merit 
for community involvement is presented to the Starr family for their development of the Shafter Ford Theater. Accepting the award tonight is Shafter City Manager Scott Hurlbert. Well, thank you. I, uh, first, I need to apologize. Apology from the Star family. They had a, an unavoidable conflict tonight, and um, I found out just a few hours ago that I would be accepting on their behalf, which I'm really glad to, to do. Um, if you know the Star family, the Star and Star Farms, they are farmers, but the two sons, uh, Fred and, and Larry, they farm for a living, but they live to, uh, to do theater. Um, Larry is a very talented playwright. He's written many of the, the plays that we uh, put on during the Colors Festival, including this year, and their original works, including all the music and, and dialogue. Uh, and Fred is, runs the lighting, and, and uh, Fred Jr., rather, the lighting and, and the sound system. So they really have taken what could have been uh, just blight on the corner there with a closed uh, dealership and invested a tremendous amount of their own uh, resources and time and some tears in putting that theater together. And I encourage you to watch for an opportunity to see it. It really is a remarkable theater and, um, and we're really thankful to have them in the community and that they've invested in this, uh, this asset for us. So thank you very much. At its inception, Bakersfield College's Garden Fest was little more than a plant sale to raise money for the school's environmental horticulture program. But with the right sunlight, water, and tender loving care, it has grown into much, much more. Conceived and executed by volunteer faculty and students when it started more than a decade ago, Garden Fest today includes representatives from local landscaping businesses, nonprofit agencies promoting cleaner air, and organizations educating our community about healthier cooking choices while at the same time promoting the academic services Bakersfield College offers. The event has shifted its focus to promoting both the benefits and ease through which homeowners can undertake sustainable and responsible horticultural practices that help reduce water, pesticide, and energy use while improving soil health, air quality, and property value. Annually, upwards of 5,000 people attend the free day-long event that provides not only numerous vendor booths, but a variety of seminars throughout the day on gardening, landscaping, and cooking tips. The Bakersfield College Culinary Program demonstrates nutritious, mouth-watering recipes, while the ag business students sell merchandise donated to their program at the Renegade Rag Store. Garden Fest is now benefiting more than just the environmental horticulture program on campus. However, it is successful largely to the credit of the two-person faculty of this program who have nurtured this event and helped it evolve. Professor Lindsay Ono and horticulture technician Sally Stearns have helped grow Garden Fest into an event that not only raises money to assist several educational programs, but now is able to add scholarships to the mix. Student volunteers are eager to share their academic training with the public and to gain practical knowledge of leadership and advocacy, networking and marketing. Garden Fest has evolved into a collaboration between the community and the college, making it one of the best springtime gardening events in Kern County. We are proud to present our 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Community Involvement to Bakersfield College's Environmental Horticultural Program, Garden Fest. Accepting the award is Professor Lindsay Ono and Horticultural Technician Sally Stearns. Please welcome them. Hey, I'm Lindsay Ono, the plant professor from Bakers Hill College, heard every Saturday morning from 8 to 10 on Kern Radio, Garden Talk 1180. Hey, I was supposed to say that, it's in my contract. <laughs> but you know, this is one of the things that's really made our event so successful is that it started from a seed. You know, our very first Garden Fest, five participants, five participant groups, four community gardens, and us. And so nowadays, with the advent of my boss over here, Dr. Sonia Christian, and Sally Stearns, who could not be here today, you know, we have grown this into such a phenomenal event. You know, springtime is the time to garden, but this is the time to get involved with the community. 
you know, we've always thought, yeah, we need to raise money, but we also wanted to make sure that we raised a cause. And the cause was to announce to everybody in Bakersfield and Kern County that there are those nonprofits out there that are trying to make a difference, and this is one of those great events that allows them to do it at a very minimal cost. So uh, thank you very much, the, the Council of Governments, and thank you very much, and I hope to see you at Garden Fest on April 16th. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Thomas Roads Improvement Program, otherwise known as TRIP, is a unique partnership among the City of Bakersfield, County of Kern, Caltrans, and Kern Council of Governments. Recognizing the immense need for updated infrastructure in Bakersfield and the surrounding region, these agencies developed a program to help improve our transportation network. With Bakersfield now the ninth largest city in California, TRIP knows that our roads need to be a reflection of the region's growth. Last fall, TRIP partners and contractors completed the Morning Drive Interchange Project at State Route 178. With a new bridge across State Route 178 for Morning Drive traffic, tied into an existing roadway on the south side of the freeway, the project created a direct connection to State Route 58. It also widened State Route 178 from two to four lanes between the Fairfax Road Interchange and Cantoria Drive. Auxiliary lanes were added to both the eastbound and westbound lanes between Morning Drive and Fairfax Road. During the two-year construction process, the team overcame design challenges, minimized construction disruptions, found additional cost savings, and made every effort to be good neighbors, which resulted in very few complaints from local residents and commuters. Since completion, the project has relieved traffic congestion and improved travel times, while simultaneously creating opportunities for much-needed retail and commercial development in the Northeast. The Morning Drive Interchange is a hallmark of community progress located at the crossroads of economic development and responsible stewardship. Kern Cog salutes the TRIP partnership. The 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Transportation is presented to the Thomas Road Improvements Program. Christina Budak will be accepting the award. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Well, that pretty much was my entire speech. Um, everything I had on my cue card was just said. Um, so I'd just like to say thank you for my, to my team, which was uh, Granite Construction, Caltrans, Mendoza, and T.Y. Lin. Um, on a funny note, when we started the project, we always said we had to have something pink on the project. Um, we started with pink shovels, which created a conversation in the Californian one day. And um, we ended with having some pink concrete on the project somewhere. You just have to find it. But when you see it, it's there. So thank you very much. Engineers are supposed to be creative in designing a project to maximize cost efficiency, but the West Ridgecrest Boulevard reconstruction project took that challenge to a completely different level. The one and a half mile roadway widening and reconstruction project is on an east-west arterial that runs through the center of Ridgecrest from Mayhan Street to China Lake Boulevard. It connects rural areas to the west with State Route 178 and passes through the city's business district. The corridor serves a mix of commercial, industrial, and vacant land developments. Despite the sheer need for updated infrastructure and a rapid population expansion, finding the money to build it proved the hardest part of all. Since construction funds were limited, the city's engineering department had to come up with a plan that was not only highly efficient, but extremely cost effective. Originally relying mostly on federal funds, by the time the project was ready to build, there was only enough to cover phase one. In order to stay within budget and still have money for phase two, engineers managed to save 30% in materials by recycling existing pavement. The West Ridge Crest Boulevard Improvement Project was completed in spring 2015, and since then, traffic operations along the corridor have improved dramatically, specifically at the Downs and Norma intersections where traffic signals were also installed. The project has improved the city's image and safety for vehicles, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Ridgecrest staff and elected officials didn't let a lack of money stop them from accomplishing big plans. The 
2015 Regional Award of Merit for Transportation is pre presented to the City of Ridgecrest Engineering Department for the West Ridgecrest Boulevard Project. Mayor Pre Peggy Breeden will be accepting the award. I can only say thank you to all the people who made it happen. They are right here. I can't imagine how it could have been how it could have been done anyway, except through a spirit of cooperation, willingness to learn, and willingness to work. And I thank Kern Cock and the entire community of Ridgecrest for all that they did, and especially our people here that made it happen. Will you stand up, guys, please? We, the heavy lifting, too. Thank you. Here in the Kern region, we're all about efficiency, and Jim Gregory's Village Retreat Apartments are leading the way for higher density refurbishment. The entity that became Village Retreat was built in the 1980s as an extended stay hotel that closed in the early 2000s due to a lack of business. The grounds quickly became an outdated eyesore located in an otherwise successful planned unit development neighborhood. Jim Gregory saw the opportunity to transform the property into small but highly functional apartments with built-ins and multi-use furniture, a living large with less concept. He wanted to establish a private estate setting with a sense of community. The grounds were transformed into beautiful gardens with stacked stone walls, meditation nooks, grilling, dining, and conversation areas where tenants could meet and socialize. This special, environmentally friendly residential community also includes a yoga studio, free laundry facilities, bicycles, gardens, a meeting room, a coffee shop, and gray water irrigation using wastewater from the laundromat. By providing a residential option unavailable anywhere else in the Indian Wells Valley, Village Retreat has demonstrated that Ridgecrest is ready for a new housing mix and the benefits that come with a variety of options in the market. It's ideas like Jim Gregory's that keep Kern County growing and thriving. The 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Environmental Resources and Conservation goes to James H. Gregory for the Village Retreat in Ridgecrest. Accepting the award is Jim Gregory. Oh, that's a good one. Congratulations. Thank you. And you deserve it. Congratulations. My name is Matthew Alexander, and I'm the city planner in Ridgecrest. And as many of you know, planners spend an inordinate amount of our time uh, trying to convince developers to be innovative and imaginative. And I, you can't believe what a pleasure it is to have a developer come along who causes me to think out of the box. And that's Jim Gregory. Jim, um, back in the 1980s, built a plan unit development in Ridgecrest called Heritage Village which is just a model community. It's um, built around a park, it has Montessori school, commercial, mixed use housing. But more recently, um, Jim went away. He went to Costa Rica and Colorado and a number of other points on the globe. And he came back to Ridgecrest and he saw that there, there's a hotel as part of Heritage Village, which um, had some extended stay suites, but they had fallen into disrepair and Jim saw what that was doing in the community, so that was the impetus for him to create uh, village retreats. So Jim, thank you for being so innovative. Well, thank you, Matthew. Uh, it's obviously not uh, me. There's a ton of other people involved, most of them sitting here, and one of them with the camera there. Uh, but this reminds me, I, I'm a history buff, and I and, uh, read a story about um, Pancho Villa when he captured uh, Guatemala, or uh, Guadalajara, Guadalajara, and he was sitting in the governor's chair and all of his men were around him and his, one of his generals came up and wanted to give him an award and he told about all the great deeds he'd done and all the people he'd saved and all the enemy that he'd slain and all this stuff and so they gave him a medal and Pancho Villa looked at the medal and he said, uh, such a small medal for so many great deeds. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> 
anyway, obviously it wasn't Pancho Villa, it was a whole bunch of other people. So that's why I feel, I, I feel extremely lucky. Uh, my wife is here. Uh, we have the best mayor in any of the cities in, Ridge, in uh, Kern County, I believe. Peggy Breeden, great city council, Mike Maurer, uh, just tons of friends here. So thank you. Congratulations. Transportation is the largest single source of air pollution in Kern County. That's one reason why we should be so grateful for companies like Airport Valet Express. Retired attorney Phil Rudnick founded the service in December 2013 as a means of providing safe, comfortable, reliable, and environmentally friendly transportation to and from LAX. He wanted to not only make life easier for those traveling, but to reduce our region's air pollution at the same time. Certainly, the Express isn't the first company to offer bus service to LAX. However, Rudnick's vision was to ensure that local travelers had a consistent, dependable option for connecting to the West Coast's largest airport, while also helping the region in other ways. The service has estimated that it will potentially save 13.3 million passenger miles annually, one in a series of steps to improving our air over time. The Express has also been generous by paying forward to the community in other ways as well. It provides free transportation for active military personnel, children up to 10 years old who are accompanied by an adult, turnaround chaperones for children or dependent adults, and service animals. We are confident that Airport Valley Express will continue to expand and become a staple for those in Kern County who want a comfortable, reliable, and stress-free trip to LAX and back. Please join me in congratulating Airport Valet Express, the 2015 recipient of the Kern Volpe Regional Award of Merit for Environmental Resources and Conservation. Accepting the award is Airport Valet Express founder and leader, Phil Rudnick. just don't have the statuette. Just this beautiful plaque, though. Well, that's so kind of you. Well, first of all, I want to thank all of you for the recognition that you've given my team that's over there uh, that started this company. I just happened to be the one that signed the checks. They did all the hard work. Uh, firstly, I want you to know that uh, the opportunity to serve our community uh, sometimes is hard to find. Uh, as individuals, we look for ways that we can help out. And many times we come up empty because we don't have a vehicle, we don't have a method, we don't have maybe the creativity to find the way to assist the community in its hour of need. Uh, we're a local company. And because we're local, we are concerned about serving our local community. And one of the ways that we have done that and are doing that, you have heard on the presentation, actually I was hoping that I could negotiate that video out in exchange for about 30 minutes for, with you people. <laughs> but they said no, I couldn't do that. So I'm cutting my remarks short. But the, th the fact is, is that we are very proud of our kindness fairs. And our kindness fairs are things that have been developed because we paid attention to what our community needed. Uh, with children, very expensive to travel with children. Uh, the military, many of them tell us that without that free transportation, they wouldn't have been able to come home for the holidays. Uh, people who have parents and grandparents who need to make a connection in LA, either to meet somebody or to catch a flight. Uh, we encourage them, go down with them, chaperone them. Uh, you ride with us free back and when. We're more interested in the safety of the people than we really are in the fair. And so because of that, we have garnered a wonderful, wonderful following from those people who have found us and who need rides to LAX. Now, one of the things that we've also been able to do is we've been able to sponsor 
what we call the wave hog beach trips. Has anyone ever heard of that? No, secret, secret. Actually, it's something that started because of an article that Steve Flores wrote in the Bakersfield, Californian over a year ago. And what we do in the summertime is we take mostly underserved, not necessarily underprivileged, but underserved children on free trips to the beach down at Dockweiler Beach. And uh, you can't imagine the uh, excitement that some of these children find. Uh, I will just relate one story to you that they told me. That there was this young girl who was standing on the beach looking out to the ocean next to the chaperone. And she went over here and she said, Miss, you mean that's what all that blue is on the map in the schoolroom? <laughs> right. And you'll be amazed at how many children in our community have never been to the beach. And so we are doing that again this year, and we hope to continue to be able to do that. Uh, one of the other things that we do, and in connection with the environmental, is that we pride ourselves in really being the gateway to public transportation in the L.A. Basin. Because you can ride our bus to LAX, and then for $8, you can travel almost anywhere in the LA Basin on the flyaway system in the metro line, which means you don't need to go down there with a car. You can ride with us, because that is our motto. You fly the bus, no stress, no fuss. <laughs> and in the wintertime, the coffee is on us. <laughs> now, just to finish, one of our most recent initiatives is in recognition of our oil and gas industry. Everyone knows, especially those of you that survive on tax dollars, know how difficult it's going to be for our community because of the low prices. And then I read the Californian and find out that the airline that was providing direct service from Bakersfield to Houston, which is what many of our uh, oil executives need to travel on, pull out, or is going to be pulling out, because it just wasn't economic to continue to support that. And so, in our usual way, we talked about it, and so Airport Valet Express kicked off last week the oil for transportation. A barrel of oil will get you a ticket to LAX. <laughs> And, and we even are giving them a, 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 a uh, uh, premium price. The price of oil is around $25 a barrel. We're giving them $30 of value. <laughs> Sounds foolish? Yes and no. And I'll tell you, the primary reason that we did that is not because we expect to get flooded with oil. The primary reason is, is that we thought we could be an example for other local businesses to think out of the box how can they also contribute towards assisting our industries here in our county in their way and I'm sure that hopefully other companies will do that. Lastly, before the hook comes out, <laughs> uh, I want to mention something to Jim Gregory who I've known for many years from the time he started out in Ridgecrest and you've got your planning director here, Jim. Uh, I'm giving you a challenge. I own 11 acres of, of commercially zoned property on North Downs, and I need a partner, so figure out how to build another one of those <laughs> facilities there. Thank you very much, and I would like to thank my group back there. We're not used to reading about police departments that invite operational audits, but that's exactly what the Bakersfield Police Department did in 2014. The International Association of Chiefs of Police, otherwise known as the IACP, undertook a comprehensive study of BPD's management and operations. The IACP is a top law enforcement advocacy organization called upon to analyze BPD's operation relative to the best practices of the most effective law enforcement agencies. Once completed, the IACP presented a report that contained 34 recommendations to improve the local police department. 
Most of the recommendations pertain to community engagement, workload management, date-driven practices, accountability, staffing, youth-focused policing, technology, and leadership development. As of September, approximately 50% of the recommendations had been implemented and another 24% are underway. In the interim, BPD has seen its response time for Priority 1 calls drop by 70%, with the average time to arrive at a Priority 1 location down by 36%. Priority 2 calls and arrival times have also decreased by 29 and 28% respectively. Another big change has occurred in the department's dedication to increasing community outreach opportunities. Patrol personnel are now responsible for a specific geographic area and its residents, helping officers build a rapport within their respective zones and in turn better serving the people. Meanwhile, newly assigned school resource officers work collaboratively with students and their families to reduce school truancy and behavioral problems. We expect this progress to continue and we're proud of the men and women who courageously keep our community safe. The 2015 Richard A. Maxwell Regional Award of Merit for Public Safety is presented to the Bakersfield Police Department. Assistant City Manager Chris Hewat and Administrative Analyst Chris Jerry are accepting the award. Oh, this is not Chris Gary. <laughs> I know, uh, Police Chief Greg Williamson. I'm just, I'll be real quick uh, on behalf of the, the manager's office. Uh, thank you to Kern Cog. This was truly a collaborative effort. Everyone from uh, the police department to the community who provided feedback uh, to all the different surveys and, and input that they, they had to our uh, police department, to command staff, to Assistant Chief Martin, who I think I talked to more during this period of time than I ever have. Uh, on, on various things uh, to the Public Works Department actually too who actually helped uh, with some remodeling uh, to, to assist our crime analysts as part of this, this project. It was really truly a collaborative effort. The successes are in the data that's, that's uh, presented and uh, it was a, a great opportunity for, for the city to take a look at our operations and uh, certainly uh, we, are, we are proud of, of what have, we have accomplished and, and what's left to accomplish, so thank you. Thank you. Like Chris said, this truly is a collaborative effort um, involving everybody from the last officer assigned uh, to our city leaders, the city manager, our city council, um, and the community where we went out and did numerous surveys to find out what they wanted and how they, you, wanted to be policed in our community. It has been very rewarding, very effective. I always say um, police officers don't like way, the way things are, but they hate change at the same time. And so sometimes it's a, it's a very difficult issue to come through when you sit down with the manager and his staff and they say, we're having a consultant in, or what do you think about having a consultant in, in to come and look at you? Because we have a lot of pride, as you know, in a deep tradition here. Lastly, I wanna say how proud I am of, of the men and women who have actually gone out there and done the work uh, with the community and, um, I, I need to say one more thing to be honored in the name of Richard Maxwell, who selflessly, selflessly gave his life a couple decades ago. A local sheriff's deputy um, just makes it uh, um, all, the, all the much better and more rewarding for us. And please, please remember those men and women that are out there protecting you when you sleep at night, on the weekends, and on the holidays when you're enjoying yourself and they're out there doing the same thing that Richard Maxwell would do if they had to. Thank you. The Downtown Bakersfield Development Corporation understands how much power partnerships have to change a community. A nonprofit organization established in 2013 to transform Bakersfield's historic business, arts, and entertainment districts, the DBDC accomplishes its goals through multiple collaborative efforts with groups that share a similar vision. DBCD has committed to an ongoing sustained effort through local grants and partnerships with other organizations that are also making a difference in Bakersfield. Led by 10 board members, an executive director, and two part-time staff, 
the DBDC has been working hand in hand with the Bakersfield Downtown Business Association to focus energy on the 300 block area in hopes of portraying downtown Bakersfield as safe, secure, and welcoming to locals and tourists alike. Its commitment doesn't stop there. Over the past two years, DBDC has hired an urban planner to hold public meetings with property owners, city officials, and community leaders to produce the first phase of a downtown urban development plan. Members also attended meetings at Caltrans to discuss ideas for better directional signs leading into downtown, as well as served on the Kern Cog Steering Committee for the Metro Bakersfield Transit Center study, plus much more. It's exciting to see the positive impacts that DBDC is having in our community in such a short amount of time. The 2015 Regional Award of Merit for Innovation is presented to the Downtown Bakersfield Development Corporation, co-chairman uh, Kevin Bartle and Kathy Butler, executive director, will accept the award. Well, on behalf of the DVDC, I'd like to thank uh, First Kern Cog for this award, and uh, I'd like to thank all of you in this room. I know that this work that we've done for downtown Bakersfield really has been a collaboration, not just amongst the board, but among those who work for the city, those who are advocates for our community, and those who have an interest in, in Bakersfield. And uh, as you look at this board, I know many of us uh, serve in other, other um, opportunities in the city, but Really, we've brought together a, a large cross-section of people in Bakersfield. We have nonprofit workers, we have small business owners, we have uh, people involved in real estate, we have people who are involved in uh, advocacy work. It all comes down to one thing, why we all serve on this board, and that is that we all have a passion to see what we believe is the heart of our community become something that's healthy, that's thriving, and something that is really um, the, the poster child and really the, the ambassador uh, for our community at Bakersfield, and we all take pride in the work. Uh, that we are doing and uh, as was said in, in the video earlier we began in 2013 uh, we are just getting started and we are thrilled to see the future of what is uh, is in stock for uh, the city of Bakersfield as well as the downtown area and uh, before we go I would like to to turn the podium over to a woman who has spent the last 41 years uh, being the leader of downtown uh, revitalization and um, anything from uh, sending emails at 4:45 in the morning. Uh, One o'clock in the morning. One o'clock in the morning. I've gotten a few of those. Uh, two leading efforts that have really left a, a, a footprint on our community. Uh, in the early 90s, the Fox Theater, which I'm sure many of you have been to and seen a show, uh, was set to be converted into a 99 cent store, a dollar, uh, basically a, a one dollar uh, store for for clothing. And uh, Kathy Butler led a community effort to. Uh, get people behind supporting the, the saving of the Fox Theater as a historical landmark as well as something that really tells the history of our community and that effort not only led by the energy of, of, of Kathy and this group but uh, as something that brought the community behind them to really invest in our downtown. That's what this group's all about and that's what is going to make it a success and uh, we are, are thankful Kathy for what you've done and we would love to hear a few words from you about you know, what we have in, in the future to look forward to. Thank you. I'm an oldie but a goodie. I work very hard, but it's the new youth. It's those people that want to see the future. They, they are giving us the input and the direction. And I'm so excited about this because we're at a turning point downtown. And this year, with the new, whether it's going to happen or not, the high-speed rail, we are working on a development plan for the downtown area. This next year is an exciting, this year is an exciting uh, opportunity for us to create a vision. These are the new youth who want to see an exciting, vibrant downtown. And with the help and what we're doing and guidance and the new youth, I invite, invite all of you to be part of our team and dream in 2016. Thank you. For the second year running, Bob Neath's pedestrian project applications have received statewide attention through the Active Transportation Program, 
which in 2015 alone awarded the County of Kern more than $2.3 million for sidewalk and pedestrian ramp improvements in Mojave and Lamont. This relatively new program improves opportunities for bicyclists and pedestrians with a competitive program that demands solid projects from those who decide to apply. Bob Neath jumped headfirst into the program since its first iteration in 2014, and we have to give him this, the man can write a grant application. His modest proposal for the Mojave project, which was $896,000 in state and federal grant money, matched by $350,000 in county funds, tied for the highest score in the state among 87 projects. The slightly larger Lamont project, coming in at $1.43 million, received a ranking of 95 out of 100. Evaluators were particularly impressed with the application's public outreach efforts, which used surveys, traffic counts, personal interviews, website polls, and other techniques to estimate the number of pedestrians today relative to potential future users. When completed in 2017, the Mojave Pedestrian Improvement Project will include new sidewalks and wheelchair accessible ramps behind existing curb and gutter throughout downtown Mojave. The plan improvements are adjacent to three Mojave schools, which also makes it eligible for funding to be set aside for the Safe Routes to Schools projects. The Lamont project follows the same structure. Grant writing is only one of Bob's many talents. Prior to his service at Public Works, he spent 12 years with the Roads Department and currently runs the county's Kern Transit Program, an inner city public transportation service shuttling passengers from each of Kern's unincorporated communities to Bakersfield and even Palmdale, Lancaster. Bob Neath's vision and skills are like no other. We know he will continue to bring much needed improvements to our communities. Kern Cog congratulates Bob Neath with the 2015 Daryl Hildebrand Regional Award of Merit for distinguished leadership. Bob. Wow, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Kern Cog and Aaron Hakimi. Um, <clears throat> the one theme I think that you can see that's co consistent through all the speakers tonight is word team. Um, I was taught a long time ago, good leaders surround themselves with uh, talented people. Great leaders listen to them. Uh, <laughs> I have been blessed with a tremendous team. Um, we just barely touched on the, on the transit work. Uh, Denise Haynes is the bookends in my career. We worked together 20 years ago uh, in waste management when I was put into this position and looking to assemble a team. She was the first person I wanted to get. And uh, she was ready to retire at that time. She's now on her third one-year contract. Uh, <laughs> We're, we're thankful for the years we've got, and, and even if this is the last one, I, I just uh, really appreciate what she's done. Ruby Horta was also working in transit, and when we started to put together the 2015 AT, ATP application, the state recommended that it not just be engineers, that you get planners involved as well, and, and Ruby has a degree in planning, so I asked her, as her boss, are you interested in helping me? And she said yes. Uh, interestingly enough, she said yes. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, where she really uh, shone was in Lamont, uh, the fact that she's bilingual. She went down there and led the public outreach. Um, it was uh, just a tremendous effort and uh, really made everybody in the community part of the project, and that's what the state was looking for. Um, and, she, and, and, you know, when we were all done, I said, you need to put this on, the, on your resume because it's going to pay off someday. Uh, I didn't know that day would be like two months later when she left us <laughs> to uh, move up to the Bay Area, work in Contra Costa County, but uh, she came back for the dinner tonight, and I'm tremendously honored that you would do that. Thank you. Uh, Norma Quintero is our third member. Uh, she can't be here tonight. If she was, I would tell, you, I would tell her how uh, great she is and, and what an awesome job she's doing. A um, couple other people I want to thank. Uh, Craig Pope, uh, Public Works Director. Um, for giving me the freedom to do uh, what we, uh, what we set, out, uh, set out to do, especially in the transit world. I imagine as an engineer it had to be strange having somebody coming in with logos and color swatches and all that and trying to understand what the heck was he thinking, but uh, he let us go with it and it's been successful. Um, people in Mojave uh, have been, were terrific. Um, Todd Kulett and Bill Deaver. And then a uh, special thank you to Zach Scrivener, supervisor, uh, his staff, um, just 
all the help we could have asked for at Mojave. Um, he, in a, in a time of great cynicism, he and his staff are truly a good example of what government can do. So thank you all very much. As architect of the landmark Kern County Zoning Ordinance, Lorelei Oviatt and her staff at the Kern County Planning and Community Development Department found a way to bridge the gap between ensuring environmental integrity and continued economic development throughout the region. She conceived of the ordinance as a compromise between the region's goals of becoming the nation's energy leader and maintaining reliable environmental stewardship. The ordinance focused on streamlining the oil and gas permitting process over the next 25 years in exchange for environmental protections up front. More than 125 consultants and planning department staff spent two and a half years to produce the $12.2 million environmental impact report and draft ordinance. The Board of Supervisors finally approved the massive 2,000-page EIR on November 9th. The Kern County Zoning Ordinance is only the latest of Lorelei's hard work and extreme efforts. During the course of her substantial career, she has worked in land development for both the public and private sectors. Her experience has focused on large-scale multi-agency project management, moving extremely complex projects through the system under accelerated timelines and formulating quality of life policies to further affordable housing goals and guarantee fair housing compliance in the county. Her passion to ensure Kern County is the nation's energy leader is well known. She has led the county in permitting nearly 10,000 megawatts of renewable energy to date for wind, solar, and alternative fuels. With Lorelei, we see firsthand the power one person can have in helping to shape an entire county's future. Kern. Kern Cog proudly, proudly recognizes Lorelei Aviat, or as I like to call her, the innovator, uh, with the 2015 Daryl Hildebrand Regional Award of Merit for Distinguished Leadership. Thank you. So I noticed I had my mouth open, was talking a lot in all of those, so I'll take a few moments to say a few words. Uh, first, uh, you know, I want to say that I'm honored, especially for this award, since uh, I did many projects with Daryl Hildebrand, and I'm really moved by actually having this Distinguished Leadership Award from Kern Cog. So you may think of me as one person, but I'm actually an extension of the five members of the Board of Supervisors. And I appreciate that my bosses have the confidence to give me their ideas, their dreams, their visions, not always fully formed, and say, Lorelei, go out and see what you can bring back. And they allow me to be a warrior for Kern County people. And so I want to Know, you to know that I share this award with them, with all of the people on my staff who put up with me and, and my driving passion that we're here to serve the over 800,000 people in Kern County and make Kern County the leader in California. We will not be overlooked. And what we have to bring is a function of all those, the energy of all those people. And so I just want to once again say uh, thank you to the Board of Supervisors for their confidence in me and to Kern Cog for this Distinguished Leadership Award. Thank you very much. When a leader has vision, dedication, and opportunity, almost anything can happen, and it did in Ridgecrest with the regional hospital and health services in general. When Jim Suver arrived as the new CEO in 2009, the hospital had no idea what was in store. Seeing an immediate need in the community, he set about buying a local skilled nursing facility and opened Bella Serra, allowing residents to see their loved ones in a local environment where quality care and needed services were guaranteed. He also began acquiring properties adjacent to the hospital for future growth. Suver and the hospital's board of directors had developed both a dental program for those in need and a telestroke program for immediate care of stroke patients. In addition, the hospital opened an outreach clinic in the neighboring community of Trona that had no medical services. This life-saving endeavor has been an immediate asset to the residents there. 
Suver was also instrumental in getting Ridgecrest Regional Hospital accredited and pushed to preserve and protect financial stability by converting it into a critical access hospital. He stays closely involved in community organizations and has helped sponsor numerous events, donated to many more, and is extremely generous to nonprofits. These are only a few of the things Suver has accomplished. Ridgecrest now has an even better hospital, upgraded services, and excellent doctors, nurses, and caregivers who are dedicated to continuing the path to extraordinary medical care. Jim Suver, his board of directors, the hospital foundation, and the entire staff continue to make quality medical care in Ridgecrest their top priority. The Kern Cog proudly recognized Jim Suver with the 2015 Daryl Hildebrand Regional Award of Merit for Distinguished Leadership. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, Kern Cog, and thank you, Mayor Breeden. I appreciate all of your work and support. I think, like many of the speakers have said, if we've had any success, it's been due to an awful lot of people with me playing a very minimal role. I like to acknowledge our community. Board of Directors that keeps me grounded, uh, a few times have told me no, um, and many times said yes and support me. And also I'd like to uh, acknowledge our 700 employees that serve our community day in and day out, making sure everyone gets excellent patient care. Thank you very much. Dr. Ronald M. Keene has a passion for music that shines not only in Bakersfield, but throughout the United States and beyond. He's been teaching choral music in California public education for 30 years, 26 of those with the Kern Community College District. At Bakersfield College, Dr. Keene presided over the Chamber Singers and Chorale, which perform many times locally and at state, division, and national conventions of the American Choral Directors Association. At BC, he was also a leader in multicultural music and currently publishes a series through Pavin Publishing. In addition to his duties at BC, Dr. Keene is an accomplished choral composer and conductor. He regularly adjudicates for choral festivals both here and abroad, most recently visiting Bali, Hawaii, and Ireland. Several of his compositions have been published, including his magnum opus, An American Mass. He has also served on the boards of several professional organizations, and in 2013 was awarded the Shirley Trembley Distinguished Teaching Award by his colleagues at Bakersfield College. Dr. Keene has had a dramatic impact on choral music in the Bakersfield community, spreading quality music production here, around the states, and the world. He has been active in building choral experiences in Kern County, from hosting festivals to conducting the Bakersfield Masterworks Chorale and bringing in many notable professionals. He conducted the Bakersfield Symphony Orchestra, plus the combined BC Choir and Chamber Singers at the inaugural concert of the Performing Arts Center Outdoor Theater in April 2015. Dr. Keene's continued dedication to the vibrancy of Kern County's choral music is noticed all over the world, but especially here at home. We are grateful for people like him who go above and beyond to bring culture and respect to our region. Kern Cog proudly recognizes Dr. Ron Keene with the 2015 Ronald E. Brummett Regional Award of Merit for Lifetime Achievement. Thank you so much. I feel like I should turn around and conduct. <laughs> I think Bakersfield has seen my back for 30 years now. <laughs> Um, boy, I think Scott Kelly just arrived back on the planet, uh, right, from a year in space, and I bet he's thinking, can't we all just get along? <laughs> and uh, I'm honored to be amongst all of you tonight because you proved that we can, and look towards the future and see what we have in common and celebrate our commonalities. Um, so lifetime doesn't stop when, when you retire. I'm still teaching. I, I was asked to come back and teach the world music classes at, at Bakersfield College and still traveling the world and had five commissions to compose for universities and high schools this year. Get to do a lot of travel. But I think one of my most proudest moments of teaching was today. I combined uh, the Native American class taught by Dr. Matt Garrett 
with my world music class on, uh, and today was dedicated to the music of Navajo traditions. And he did a history of that. And uh, I led a song and dance for about a half an hour with 75 combined students. And the, the drummer was a Navajo woman that I didn't know we were going to have. She was in Dr. Matt Garrett's, Matt Garrett's class. And when we were done, I said, did I honor Navajo tradition? And she says, yes, you did. Thank you very much. I can't think of a greater honor. Thank you. The Bob Parker Scout Lodge was a true community-based project that illustrates the benefits of living in such a tight-knit city. In June 2010, California City staff received a request from Boy Scout Troop 413 regarding improvements to the existing Scout Hut in Central Park. The former sports arena property was considered an ideal location for future Scout-related activities. The Council approved the project on October 9, 2010 and from the beginning it was planned to be constructed by volunteer labor and landscaped by youth volunteers. After five years in the making and more than 3,000 labor hours, the Bob Parker Scout Lodge was dedicated on November 7, 2015. The lodge is named after Robert Carroll Parker, who served honorably in the United States Air Force for 26 years. After retiring at Edwards Air Force Base in 1978, Bob Parker served in the Boy Scouts of America as a scoutmaster and chairman for Troop 413 throughout the 1980s, 90s, and early 2000s. He continued to serve in scouting in the Boy Scouts National Council Western Region as a committee board member until his passing in May 2007. On the day the lodge was dedicated, leaders were already using Scout Island to conduct trainings. With the lodge now complete, many more opportunities for scouting activities are now available, as well as for other youth organizations and citizen groups. Kern Council of Governments is proud of the can-do spirit in California City and of the men, women, and scouts from Troop 413 and Girl Scout Troop 7572 who built this beautiful building. Pardon me. It's with very great pride that I say Kern Cog proudly recognizes the Bob Parker Scout Lodge with the Chairman's Award for Regional Cooperation. Accepting this award is Mr. Joe Berrigan, and I believe he's gonna bring his son, Adam. Um, Mr. Berrigan has two sons that are Eagle Scouts. Mr. Berrigan is also an Eagle Scout himself, and Adam Berrigan has an Eagle Scout project going on right now in California City, so we're very, I'm very proud of them. Please. Thank you. I am very honored and grateful to uh, accept these awards on behalf of all the volunteers. Uh, this project was truly a community project. We had a, a lot of citizens in the community donate food for the volunteers so they could eat lunch. We had restaurants donate food, ice, things like that. Um, I also want to thank Mayor Wood, who made it possible, our council members, Tom Weir, our city manager. Truly, truly a community project. It was truly an honor to be part of it, and it was really inspiring for me to see that and see everything we were able to do. And of course, to see the Boy Scouts, you, you, you can see in the pictures, they did a lot of work. I wouldn't call volunteers, they had no choice, but they were, <laughs> they, they, they were there helping out. And one of those was my son, Adam. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What does it say for me to do next? Uh, it says, <laughs> This brings us to the end of the program. Please join me one last round of applause for all the recipients. Thank you so much for coming. We hope to see you again next year. Thank you, everyone.